Do you want to see one of the most beautiful things ever made? In my eyes, at least. Back in December, my friend Sergi and I got to talking about putting together a stereo for his living room, which helped reignite a passion that I stepped away from for nearly a decade. Vintage Audio. At Pioneer, we don't build a high fidelity receiver the way some of our competitors do. Whatever music you enjoy, enjoy it more on Morant Stereo. Only the best stock. If you want to buy techniques, we sell it to you, no hype. That's why my customers always feel fans. When I was 15, I got my first stereo, and shortly thereafter, my bedroom looked like this. Then this, and then this. My mom was worried that I was turning into a hoarder, so my uncle helped out by bringing home another pair of speakers for me. Maybe it's the aesthetics, or the sound, or just a grown-up version of my obsession with round things that was obvious as a kid, but I love this stuff. For Sergi, I found this receiver with no functioning lights and some sound issues. Then the pair of speakers just sitting forgotten in a corner at a local antique mall. The speakers worked great, laying flat on their backs, but if you stood them upright, they distorted because the foam surround that supports the cone of the speaker had rotted away, which causes the cone to sag and then rub on the magnet as it moves in and out, making noise. It's pretty easy to fix this, it's just a bit tedious. You start by just scraping off all the old foam, and I actually have to remove this gasket that goes around the outside of the speaker. You can see here, I kind of moved the speaker out of the way, but this is just the, the tedious part. You just have to clean this really well, get that gasket off, and then clean all the foam off the speaker cone and the, the metal basket of the speaker. At this point, Sergi popped in to help out, so I got him cleaning the other speaker, and I continued to clean the foam off of mine. And it's just important that all of the old foam is removed off of these drivers so that the new foam surround will adhere properly to the, the metal basket and the paper cone, just because these speakers are a sealed design, which means that any air leaks in the cabinet or the drivers will diminish the sound quality, especially the bass. Sergi and I were having a great time just chatting and catching up while he was finishing that other speaker driver, but I figured I would pop over and see what we could do about the burnt out lamps in this receiver. As you can see when you turn it on, I actually hit the wrong button there, but the lights just don't work on it. There was just no lights at all. These things look really great inside, so it's always a, a fun time taking them apart, and especially with the little string that runs the tuner dial. So when you move the knob for the tuner for the radio, it moves that little light across the tuner face, and it's just run on this system of pulleys to get to the actual FM tuner, and I've always just thought that looks super cool. The lights on the face of these old receivers are definitely a key piece of this vintage aesthetic, and replacing them usually isn't that hard. We just had to remove a few screws and some metal and plastic housings to get access to them. And sometimes you have to solder the smaller bulbs in place, but it turned out there was actually an issue with the fuse holder that runs all of the lights, and when I fixed that, the two lights that needed soldering already worked, so we didn't even have to replace them. One of the biggest issues with these old vintage receivers for the knobs and buttons is they just develop a crackle over time. So when you're adjusting the volume, you'll get a little crackle through the speakers, or it can even get so bad that one speaker just like doesn't work until you put the knob at the right place. And so you can spray some electronics cleaner into the potentiometers to clean them out and get all that dirt out of there and then follow it up with a little bit of electronics lubricant like deoxid fader lube or something like that, just to make sure that they're smooth operating and there's, there's no crackles in the knobs. So that's what I'm doing here. And I had to take apart the bottom of the amp to do that. So I figured I would just clean off this bottom plate that was super dusty and it was really satisfying to clean off. All right, it's time to throw the wood case back on and just do one last thing before we plug it in to make sure that it works. We're just gonna clean the plugs on the back with some fader lube, you just spray some lube in there and then spin the plug around a few times, pull it back out and then move on to the next port. And you just wanna give it a few minutes to kind of dry up a little bit and then you can wipe off anything that's left uh, and then give it a few more minutes before you power it up. But it is time to plug it in and power it up and man, that looks great.
All right, the last thing to check is the DC voltage at the speaker terminals. We just wanna make sure that they are both under 30 millivolts, so right and left. And the reason that you wanna check that is because if it's higher than that, it can damage your speakers, but if, it can also signify that there's something wrong with the receiver. And in this case, they were both very low, so it was no problem, but you just wanna make sure you check that uh, before connecting any speakers to a receiver you pick up. I finished the other speaker last night, so there's just the rim of this one left. Sergi glued the middle of it, actually. All you have to do is put a thin line of glue just all the way around the metal basket under the lip of that foam, and then you can use the butt of scissors here or something dull to kind of push it down and give a nice seal. You could even use some clothespins or something like that to leave on overnight. On a smaller driver like this, that's not really necessary. You can see here, I'm just testing this driver to make sure there's no rubbing. If that voice coil rubs in the center on the magnet, it's gonna make distorted noises when you try to play music out of it. And so you just wanna make sure that it is centered on there. On a smaller driver like this, you don't need to worry about using shims or anything like that. It's pretty easy to center it, but on larger drivers, you definitely wanna take that center dust cap off and use some shims on the voice coil and the magnet to make sure that there is spacing between them. Um, but now, since it's not rubbing or anything, we're just gonna go ahead and put that ring on that gasket on the edge of the speaker over the foam and then just let both of these drivers since they're fairly freshly glued sit for a day or so just to cure up before we play any music through them since i glued the surround on this last night and we just put the gasket on now i am going to go ahead and reinstall this one into the speaker housing so that we can just make sure that it actually works and i hadn't heard a pair of these play since i was in high school and i remember really liking the way that they sound so i was excited to just chill and enjoy some music and then i definitely started to shed a couple tears as it just felt really surreal getting back into this hobby and i just really love it a lot and i think that just looking back on all the content that i've made over the last few months something always felt like it was missing and i think i started to realize right about now that you know, this is kind of what I want to do. And I'd be really happy just making content about stereos and that sort of stuff. And that was a pretty big realization for me. After a good listening session, it was time to just sand the speakers down. So I took those badges off the front and they have these nice hardwood panels on the front and the top of the speakers. No veneer here, just straight hardwood. So I was able to sand it as much as I wanted. And that was awesome because there was a lot of water rings on the top and a lot of scuffs and dents on the fronts. And so I just went to town sanding on them. I started at 80 grit and went all the way up to 320 grit, just trying to keep it as even as I could to make sure that the stain I was gonna apply later actually just looked like the same color. The stain was going on really well and I was really happy with the way that it was looking, especially just this Verathane stain using a couple different coats of it to mix the color and get a nice sheen out of it. It, it was looking really nice until I noticed something that I wasn't happy with. All right, so I've got a little problem. You can see the wood colors are different. This one is lighter. I just went and picked up some darker wood stain. I am not a woodworking expert by any means, and I'm trying to learn to be better, but that was a rookie mistake. In the end, I was able to get it nearly identical with the other side, and all the wood panels looked, per, you know, similar enough, uh, and Sergi was happy with it, so that, that made me happy, and I'm glad that I was able to, to fix that, but woodworking is an ever-evolving skill for me. <laughs> The day of installation was quite joyful for me, just bringing the stuff in, seeing his house, seeing how it's gonna get laid out. Um, we even got a sub for him from Goodwill a couple days prior, which was super cool. He listens to a lot of hip hop, so he's definitely gonna utilize that. And for this cable routing on the left side of the hearth, he had these sweet cable routers for his wall, but I didn't realize the speaker cord was gonna go through him, so I cut it too short and we had to splice in uh, another segment of speaker wire. But man, that receiver looks sweet sitting right there. Sergi got to finish off making the speakers look stock again by putting these Advent logos back on the front. He was very detail oriented about it and tried to get them as perfect as he could. Oh no! Stay! Oh. The installation was going about as smoothly as I would have expected until we tried to play music out of the receiver and it was on, all the lights were on, everything seemed like it was working, everything was hooked up, we checked all the speaker connections and we just couldn't get any sound out of it. And I had just tested this a couple days prior, so it was working, and I was starting to think maybe I'm gonna have to take this home and do some work on it again, until I finally was like, well, let's just try to disconnect everything and, and connect it 
back again. And so we disconnected the speaker wires from the speakers, even though they were very securely into the connectors and put we just took them out and put them back in and it worked so i don't know what kind of magic that was but just do your thing child i'm glad that we could get it working and enjoy some music that night it was quite an experience just hearing it for the first time in his in his house and we both thought it sounded really good <laughs> dude i just finished installing the first stereo that i'm doing for somebody since I was like 17, 18, and I'm like on the brink of like crying because I'm just so happy. I like, there's literally, I, I don't know why, and I don't know what makes me so happy about stereos, but like bringing a stereo into somebody's house and then setting it up and then seeing them be all stoked about like, oh, the music, it sounds like so good. And just being like happy with the way it looks and the like everything. It's just like, like, so cool to me and i think that it's like it's so wild that i'm making content about this stuff because it's literally my favorite thing for, for some reason like I, I can't explain to you why like there's all these things i like about it but it's just literally unexplainably my favorite thing like i just like music and stereos and like bringing that experience to people and i just think they look great and they sound great and yeah so you made it this far thank you for watching the whole video <laughs> if you comment down below and tell me like i don't know your favorite tell me your favorite song like if you had a stare like this what song would you put on first there you go what song would you put on first on your stereo living the dream living the dream you know